Hey everyone, we're live. It's Lisa here. It's my first YouTube live, so I don't know how this is going to turn out. It's quite exciting, but also a bit nerve wracking. How is everyone? How are you all doing, lovely wild hearts? Are you okay? How's your June been? It's really hot and sweaty, isn't it? I'm very hot today. Being very British and moaning about it. <laughs> Still got my cup of tea as well. Um, I just wanted to hop on here and uh, have a catch up really. I, um, I've got lots to share with you. And um, something I wanted to ask you today was if you've ever felt stuck or like you've had to start again and that's felt really overwhelming and scary. And today I felt like I was starting again and that's why I've come on here to sort of mark the beginning of a new chapter. And I hope to be coming on here more if this is successful and talking to you. I'm also going to be putting this up on my podcast, The Wild Heart Diaries. So if you're listening on The Wild Heart Diaries, hello and welcome. It's lovely to have you here. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm a coach and I'm a writer and I help sensitive people, sensitive women mostly, um, embrace their sensitivity and become more confident in who they are. And I do that mostly through journaling and using card decks. I love card decks. I've got some here with me today, so I might pull some cards. I'm also the maker of this card deck, the Smiley Thought Cards, which I made for children but have been using this month um, with adults with much success, much success. Um, I, I mostly help people through journaling, using the cards, good old fashioned talking. I use emotional freedom technique, which is the tapping. If you know how to tap, you tap on pr pressure points on the body to release emotions. And I also use creativity and inner child work. So my story is that I am recovering from developmental trauma, childhood trauma. So that's trauma that happened to us before the age of seven. And it actually rewires our brain differently. And we can learn to live with that. It takes effort and it takes learning or unlearning and a willingness and a courage, which most wild hearts have. I keep saying wild hearts because the highly sensitive folk that I work with, I call them wild hearts. And you're all very welcome here. Wild because you will not be tamed and you have strong personalities and a lot of courage. And hearts because you're heart-centred, you're really sensitive and everything you do comes from the heart. So drop me, in, drop me um, a note in the comments if you think you're a wild heart. You might also know yourself to be an empath, an INFJ if you do the Myers-Briggs um, personality test or, um, or an indigo child. So Doreen Virtue from Hay House, or she used to be from Hay House, coined the phrase indigo child. Now, that was a wave of energy of souls that came to earth that were born at a certain time. So I was born in 1974, so you can work out how old I am, um, to change the way of the planet. And wild hearts are the change makers of the world. Let me just read in my book. So I wrote this book called Stuck Between Two Worlds. And that's why I'm asking you if you've ever felt stuck or like you're starting all over again. Because I'm going to talk a bit more about that today. But um, in the back of this book is a little glossary. And um, it tells you what all the words mean in, as we go through the books. Well, Wild Heart, the wilderness where the wild hearts go to learn has got its own little terminology and language. But a, a wild heart is a strong-willed, sensitive soul that is in tune with their feelings and the feelings of others. They have a big heart full of love. They are also a creative change maker that leads from the heart with fiery courage and steely determination. Is that you? I think many wild hearts are, um, are psychic. They're also entrepreneurs. Um, they won't be put in a box. But they've had to face certain challenges in their life to um, get to where they are. Mm hmm and I definitely have faced a lot of challenges in my life. So 
I have been feeling stuck since February. In February, I went on a retreat to Spain. And during the retreat, my inner child, uh, my two-year-old and three-year-old self came out. And she was terrified. So something happened on the retreat and she, and she came out and I felt frozen, which is what... So um, you know about the stress responses, fight, flight, freeze or fawn. Um, freeze... So it goes fight or flight and then freeze here and then complete shutdown. So I went into a freeze response and I I managed to get through the trip and I came home. But ever since then, and what are we today? We're like the 26th of June, I think. I've not felt like I've gotten back in my body. I stopped dancing. Um, I kind of went into hermit mode. I did a lot of scrolling online and wasn't feeling very creative was working too much, eating too much, and just kind of, yeah, went, in, went, went inside myself. And today, I woke up, and that all changed. So what did, I, what did I do to get out of the stuckness? Well, since the 1st of June, I have been running a 30-day journaling experience called You Got the Love. You know that song from Sex and City? You got the love. Yeah, that one. I've been running a 30-day journaling experience and I've been journaling along with the 10 other people in the group and it's been fantastic. It's been so lovely to watch people journal through their triggers, watch them bring all their feelings onto the page and work through them and come out the other side. It's been some vulnerable shares in the group where the group has been so gentle and kind supportive very understanding because they all know what it's like to be a sensitive soul in this insensitive crazy world that we live in right and the last few days that I've been journaling I've been very aware that there was a part of me that was frozen that I was trying to reach and I, I managed to reach her through journaling I can't say how old I was at that point so when you've got developmental trauma or complex trauma it's sometimes called cptsd it's in layers so at different stages ages and stages through your development you were traumatized something happened to you where you felt unsafe and there was no escape and so what you very likely did as a kid was popped out of your body and put yourself somewhere else to get through it so i dealt with um, psychological, mental and physical abuse, a lot of gaslighting, a lot of manipulation, a lot of twisting everything round, a lot of a lot of secrets and lies, whilst all seemingly appearing to be the perfect family and normal to the outside world, right? And that is very damaging for a child because the cognitive distance, it splits your psyche in half. So you have to be this kind of child who presents the outside world and then there's what's going on in your inner world and that's being denied the whole time. So obviously you don't feel safe at all and you're almost sacrificing your true self to fit into the family. And that's really common in dysfunctional families. People play roles. There's no authenticity, there's no honesty, there's no emotional attunement. So I... I, I had been journaling through this frozen part of me and I discovered her and I went to therapy on Friday and I spoke to my therapist about it. And it's it's nothing new. Like you'll also find when you're healing that um, you keep coming back or you, se you seem to keep coming back to the same blocks or the same things over and over again. But every time you come back to it, you're drilling down deeper and peeling off another layer of denial, of shame, of guilt of pain and hurt and grief. And one of the things that I talked about with my therapist on Friday was that I fucking hate mindfulness. And I said that to her, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on here. I hate it. And she said, why do you hate it? And I said, because there's a part of me that doesn't want to be in here. And she was like, what do you mean in here? And I pointed to my chest. And she said, well, when you go inside, don't go in here. 
And the chest is where all my grief is and a lot of my, when I have trauma releases and I have lots of shaking and tremors, it all, and it feels like someone's sitting on my sternum, like pressing on my sternum. It all comes out through my chest. She said, start with your big toe. So we were laughing because I said, oh, I can do that. And she was like, so just do this with me now. She was like, wiggle your big toe, wiggle your toes, feel your toes on the carpet and just breathe. And if your brain starts going, oh, I need to journal about that or I need to go off to Sainsbury's or I need a pint of milk, just come back to your toe. I said to her, I can do that, I can do that. And then we also talked about how my insides don't match my outsides. So whilst I seem to be very articulate and confident and friendly and approachable on the outside, my inner world is quite um, unsure, uh, anxious, and there's all sorts of things going on in here that I'm having to manage whilst I'm talking to you. And I think when you're a sensitive person, you can easily get overwhelmed by your environment. So you're, you seem to be more aware of what's going on out there. And you could say that's the hypervigilance of the trauma as opposed to what's going on in here. <laughs> so she was saying to me, what, what makes you feel confident? And, I, and we went back to, I was saying, I don't want to be in the body. It's the body. I don't like the body. And we talked about how I was put on a diet at a young age and how um, I was shamed for the way that I looked for being flat chested and all sorts of things um and for being ginger obviously before Ed Sheeran and Harry came along a lot of us were <laughs> uncle gingers now we're really cool and now my hair's going grey and I want it to stay ginger and um yeah we talked about that and she said to me have you ever watched the film Saturday Night Fever and I was like no and she said watch it because at the beginning you know John Travolta does the swagger and he walks he walks you know with a swagger and I said to her well I love music and you know I feel confident when I'm dancing and I feel like I'm in my body when I'm dancing and so she said try it walking home so we sort of laughed as I left her room and I walked home with my ear pods in and I put uh, slow hands on by Niall Horan do you know Niall Horan? He used to be in One Direction, the little, the little, the blonde Irish one. He's not little anymore. I think he's about 30. And so I put that on because I love that song and it's got a nice rhythm to it. And I, I walked home to that and I walked the long way around so that I could, you know, get in my body. And then uh, the rest of the weekend, I pottered around and did jobs, but I was still very hermity. A friend wanted to meet up and I still didn't feel like I wanted to. I managed to read my book a bit instead of scrolling online endlessly, which is good. I feel that, that reading is better than being online all the time. Although I do feel like I'm online at the moment because I've got one eye on TikTok because I'm watching how people do things on TikTok and I'm trying to learn, learn that so that I can go on TikTok and, and find more wild hearts. I'm on a mission to put more love into the world and find more wild hearts, more sensitive souls that want to hang out together and that want to learn how to be in the world and of the world but without cutting off their sensitivity and being able to be themselves so over the weekend yeah I did a bit of housework and potted around just did jobs didn't write any more of my next book that I'm writing which is a murder mystery and then I woke up this morning and I journaled and nothing very enlightening came out and I was like oh there's more to come there must be more to come so I got all my card decks out and I and I, I well I picked I picked four decks. I've got about 20 decks. I put, picked four decks, one of them which I've got here. And I asked three questions. I asked, what energy am I sitting in? What energy am I trying to get to? And then in the middle, I pulled cards for, you know, what energy do I need to use to get me to there? And it was really interesting what came out. And by the time I'd finished journaling, I got up and danced for half an hour. I, I do this... Um, if you're on YouTube and you watch Grow With Jo, she does like really cool little dance routines. They're only like 20 to 30 minutes long, but obviously it's a boiling hot day. I was sweating profusely when I'd finished, but I felt amazing. And I was like, woohoo, I'm back in my body. I'm back. I feel like I'm back. And what came out of the card pool was that I am still 
scared of going out into the world and meeting new people. So that's my fear. That's my block that's holding me back. I think I'm afraid that I'm going to be criticised and bullied. And I think a lot of us are scared of that, especially if you grew up in a home where you were criticised, nitpicked and bullied all the time or abused. And I realised that I just need to face that fear. And actually, the world is predominantly full of good people. If you watched Glastonbury at the weekend, you saw, oh, I cried my eyes out. You saw the crowds lifting Lewis Capaldi because, bless him, he's really suffering with Tourette's and ticks at the moment. And he couldn't finish the song. He couldn't sing. And the whole crowd just sung for him. And, oh, it was beautiful. It was so lovely. It makes me teary thinking about it. And, and, and it just makes you realise also how far we've come with the whole mental health thing, how he's publicly living out that you know, living with that affliction, living with that acute anxiety and having tics or Tourette's, I think he's been diagnosed with, which is just a manifestation of chronic anxiety. And it's it's impacting his singing. And he something that he loves so much, which is a part of him and how he expresses himself, is is now, you know, something which causes him a great deal of pain. And I think if you have that kind of overnight success, that high level of fame you're definitely going to need therapy um, or you're going to have to stay really grounded in some way I would imagine to get through it I think so yeah so today is a new day people and welcome to my first YouTube stream and I thought that if you're listening and you feel stuck and you want to move through it First of all, I did that journaling. So it's taken me till day 26 of journaling to get to reach that part of me that's frozen and lost. I want to say to you, and I know it's the thing we all hate to hear, be patient and kind with yourself. What the wild hearts in the journaling group are noticing is that when they have a day where they're sort of rambling around but not really getting to anything, that ramble continues on to the next day. And then the next day and then all of a sudden the last two sentences they write on one day will be like, bam, and they'll get their clarity and they'll get their message and they'll feel a shift in their energy. So I, I feel like I have gotten a lot out of the 30 days. It's um, it's definitely helped me understand myself more and I'm very self-aware, but I always think there's stuff that you can know about yourself. It will unstick you because it's a release. When you come to your journal pages, you come in through the head with all your mind chatter and then as you write you write into the emotional body and into the memories and into the depths of your psyche into your soul and then you release all that out onto the pages and it's really freeing and liberating now if you like journaling I run a free journaling group called journal in your jammies and I will put a link to it below for you if you go to my website smileyforlife.com forward slash oh I don't know if it is events just go to the events page on my website um, and you will find Journal in Your Jammies. It's free. We meet for an hour at eight o'clock on the last Wednesday of every month. We put some nice music on, we light a candle and then I come in with some journal prompts or something for us to reflect on. And then you can share what you've written with the group. But what we tend to do, because our journal is a really private space, is we tend to just share our experience of the journaling. And that's really powerful because to be seen, to be witnessed by the group and for them to validate your experience is also really healing. But if you if like me, you suffer with intrusive thoughts, um, anxious thoughts, unhelpful thoughts, OCD type tendencies where you can't get off that treadmill, that hamster in your mind, then I think you're really going to love journaling your jammies. Yeah, it's great. Um also, what this month has brought for me is some creativity. My creativity is back. Let me just have a slurp of my tea. Do you like tea? Do you guys drink a lot of tea? Even though it's hot, I love a cup of tea. There's something really calming and soothing about it. I've also been making lots of yoghurt bark. So... It's, it's frozen yogurt. You like smear it all out on some parchment paper 
And then I put like chopped strawberries on it and uh, chocolate chips and pecans and crumbled up digestives, sometimes some cranberries. And then I drizzle or bananas and you can drizzle peanut butter. And I've got this really nice mango and passion fruit coolie from Marks and Spencer, which I drizzle on it. And then you just pop it in the freezer tray for about three or four hours. And then you just crack bits off of it. And it's... It's creamy if you use the Greek yogurt. It's creamy and it's not as calorific as a Magnum or ice cream. And it's cool. It will cool you down in the hot weather. So I really enjoyed making that this month. Um, yes, my creativity. I wrote a poem this weekend and I'd like to read it to you if that's OK, if you've got time to listen. When I was journaling... A word that kept coming up for me was banished. A banished is a really old fashioned word. It's not one I would use. It's not one in my vocabulary. But I suppose how you could relate to being banished personally would be if you'd felt like you were rejected, like rejected by someone that you really loved and cared about. And some of you may have been rejected by your own family of origin by your own parents and whilst to the outside world it doesn't seem like they're rejecting you the rejection comes from them not loving and accepting you unconditionally they love you with conditions attached they love you only if you keep your mouth shut and keep their secrets only if you do as you're told um, only if you respect them but they don't respect you you know it's not a two-way street and I think lots of us have been rejected and perhaps emotionally abandoned uh, by people. And I guess I want you to know today that that's not a reflection of you. That's about the other person and, and what's going on for them. So I, I wrote this poem. I do write poems every now and again. When I was a kid, I used to love Pam Ayres, the poet. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. She's, she's, um, she's quite, quite an unusual lady. But I, found, I think I found a book of hers when I went to stay at a friend's house when I was a kid. And then I started to write my own poems and, and sometimes songs as well because I learnt music at school and would write make-up songs and melodies and that kind of thing. But however you can express yourself creatively, like creativity is self-expression. Yes, it's a vulnerable share. It's a vulnerable share. But... It's also incredibly healing. It can also get in touch with the parts that talk therapy cannot reach. Oh, which reminds me, I've got another workshop on the 13th of August called Creativity and or Connectivity and Creativity for Your Inner Child. So if you've if you're new to inner child work or even if you've done it before, you can come along for the day. It's from half past ten to half past five, and you can you can learn all sorts of different creative exercises because creativity sets you free as well, especially if you're a perfectionist, you worry about getting things wrong, you worry about making mistakes. When you put that pen on the page and you just see what comes out, you've got to let go a bit. You can't control so much. <laughs> oh, I find that really hard, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better. So you can come along to that workshop it's also on the events page on my website, smileyforlife.com. I'd love for you to be there. There's only a certain number of places. I'm going to keep the group small so it's intimate and it won't be recorded and resold. It, whatever happens on the day will stay in the room and you'll be able to take all your artwork away. You'll be online anyway and um, that will stay in your heart and mind and work its way down and, and, and help you with your healing. OK, right. Let's read this poem. I haven't actually read it out loud, so I don't know how I'm going to feel reading it out loud, but let's give it a go anyway. Banished. They banished her to the swampy water. She was disgracefully disowned, no longer their daughter. They banished her to the bottom of the pile. She felt invisible and guilty, like she was on trial. They banished her to the room furthest away. She was isolated because of what she might say. They banished her far to damn Coventry, she was ignored for hours intentionally. They banished her to the bottom of the dark well. She was heavily hypnotised under their spell. 
They banished her out into the lashing rain. She dared to be different. She didn't think the same. They banished her into the lion's pit. She felt more terrified than she'd ever admit. They banished her from the family home. She wondered if she would make it alone. They banished her to the swampy water. She fought the monsters and their rageful torture. They banished her to the bottom of the pile. She grew strong and still managed to keep her smile. They banished her to the room furthest away. She found her voice and had plenty to say. They banished her far to damn Coventry. Now she helps others to set themselves free. They banished her to the bottom of the dark well. Eventually, she crawled out of that hell. They banished her out into the rain. She gave them the finger and said, Never again. They banished her into the lion's pit. She outsmarted them all with her candor and wit. They banished her from the ham family home. She had so much courage, she knew she'd make it alone. She turned her back on the banishing blame. She wasn't going to play their game. She wasn't a dustbin for all their trauma. She was finally free from being their daughter. She started over and now lives banishment free. She chooses a peaceful life without cruelty. She finally conquered the shadowy fear. She lives safe in the knowledge that all is well here. There you go. That's my poem. And if you've ever been banished, felt unwanted, sent away, isolated, bullied, then I hope that poem resonates with you and gives you some comfort today to know that no matter what happens to you, as a sensitive person, you're incredibly resilient. You're emotionally resilient and strong and you can heal from that. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it there today. Uh, it's really nice chatting to you all. I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed our time together. Oh, should we pull a card before I go? Let's pull a card for you and see what message we get today. So today I've got my archetype deck. This is quite a meaty deck. Um, but this is just tuning into the energy of the people who are watching this put my book there the energy of people who are watching this live and if you like card pulls if you like the cards and you're interested into tuning into your own intuition and you'd like to understand more about how they work and get your own reading I am holding a card pulling evening called woo and wisdom where you can get a weeding from me you can get a reading from me and that's also on the events page of my website but I would love to meet more of you and I would love to be able to give you a message so oh that one's just flipped out so we're gonna oh I've got oh I've got three here oh ho, ho, ho. here we go okay so the first one is the storyteller which is what I've done today I've come online now this might be back to front on here so the energy of the storyteller in, the, in its light is the ability to experience and express life through stories and symbols. Actually, I'm reading a book at the moment called Signs by Laura Lynn Jackson, which is about how the universe communicates to us in signs and symbols. And it's fantastic. It's also really comforting and validating if you've lost someone who's um, passed over the rainbow bridge to the other side, how you can communicate with them and how you can you can, you can read that the universe has always got your back. It's always supporting you if you know what to look out for. The shadow side of the storyteller is making up tales that harm others. Yeah, making up stories that aren't true to make other people look bad. Have you had people do that to you as well? Yeah, I have. That's called a smear campaign. When the bully goes out and um, tells fibs on you so that they make you look bad to everyone else. Yeah, no. So the other side of that is to tell your truth, to stand in your truth and tell your story, which is what we're doing today. Do you find it hard to stand in your truth? What stops you from telling the truth? I hear a lot of people say, oh, stop airing your dirty linen in public or we don't want to hear about that. I remember hearing that a lot when Harry's book came out and I thought, no, let the boy speak. His life has been dictated by the establishment for years 
and by the media who've chatted shit about him all his life. Let the boy speak. He has a story to tell. Let him tell it. Why not? The other one is the Queen. Yeah, Queen. Actually, why that one's really interesting is in my journaling, what came up for me was um, there was lots of stuff around a castle as a home. But castle in terms of expanding um, my capacity to receive love. So a castle where everyone could come and be and I could connect with them instead of this little Tupperware container that I had to receive love. <laughs> it's just an exercise that we did in the uh, You Got the Love journaling experience. It was very interesting. So the light attributes of the queen are she radiates the regal feminine. She uses her benevolent authority to protect others. Yes, that's a very protective energy. Lots of us who were abused or grew up in dysfunction, we're not protected, we're not reassured, we're not validated. We're fed to the wolves. And the shadow attribute of the queen is becomes arrogant when authority is challenged, controlling and demanding. Maybe today you'd like to think about your shadow and think if you have got any controlling or demanding um, traits. I, I, I think I can be quite demanding sometimes, but then I get told we were just asking for your needs to be met. So I'm not talking about that. And obviously sometimes people will say no to that. They might not be able to meet them. But um, yeah, are you in your light or are you in your shadow when it comes to being the queen? I also think as women, if you see someone online who's confident, do you go into that good girl programming where you want to say, oh, who does she think she is? She's full of herself. She's so arrogant. When actually that might be you projecting your fears and beliefs about remaining good, remaining in your box, conforming, being good. Maybe the queen is, is the healed version of the good girl. And you have to tell your story to get there. You need to unshame your story and tell your story to get there. And then the third one is the father. So we got that. It's so, so interesting, isn't it? Because we've got the masculine and the feminine here today. And that's probably mum, dad, and then you telling your truth about your experience of them. So the light attributes of the father are talent for creating and supporting life. Positive guiding light within a tribal unit. Yeah, go and shine your light. Be the lighthouse. Be the lighthouse. And the shadow attributes of that are dictatorial control and abuse of authority. Yes, yeah, so if you grew up in a house where you were abused, then parents were abusing their power. And that is terrifying for a child because you need to stay attached to them in order to stay safe. So maybe today you could think about those three cards, the queen, the storyteller and the father. And you could journal on um, what they bring up for you, what qualities, what what masculine qualities, because we've all got masculine and feminine energy inside of us. So what masculine qualities do you have? Are they light or shadow? So do you dictate? Do you abuse your authority? Or are you supportive? Are you the lighthouse? Are you the guiding light? And then for the storyteller, are you expressing yourself? So again, come to the workshop, express yourself, do the creative stuff. That is the, or the journaling, that is the fullest expression of you. Or are you gossiping and telling stories on others? And telling the truth, really, I think that storyteller is. That is about telling your truth. We've all got stories to tell. And the most painful thing is for your story to die inside of you and be untold. And I think if it stays in there too long, it can destroy you. You've got to get it out. You've got to get it out. You've got to use this or, or, or write it. Or draw it, however it needs to come out. And then the queen, um, what is your feminine energy looking like? Are you, are you kind? Are you gentle? Are you soft and protective? Or are you arrogant when you're challenged? Are you entitled? That's the narcissistic side of the queen. Entitled. Who do you think you are? Shaming. Um, controlling and demanding. Wow, let's just have a look at what's on the bottom of the deck, what, what energy is trying to come through. Ha, ah, the rebel. Who's a rebel in the house today? 
challenges authority to affect social change, rejects spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. Yeah, if you are rejected by your family, just switch it around the other way. You know, you're rejecting them because you don't, you're calling them out on their dysfunction. You're calling them out on their shitty behaviour. You don't want to live like that. You're choosing something else, you know? And then the shadow of the rebel is, rejects legitimate authority. So authority and rules are there to keep us safe, aren't they? Are we just rejecting them out of anger or just because we can? Um, rebels out of peer pressure or fashion. That's really interesting that the rebels coming through because I think I think wild hearts can be seen as quite rebellious because they don't want to conform. They don't want to go. And it's really hard to go against the grain, to go against society, isn't it? Especially if you've been raised to be a good girl. But you must follow your own heart. You must follow your own heart and do what's right for you. Okay, lovelies. Well, I hope to see you at one of my workshops or at Journaling Your Jammies or at Woo and Wisdom on the 6th of July. It'd be great to meet more of you. You're all very welcome. I'll pop everything in the um, in here below or in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast. And I will see you all very, very soon. Now I've got to get out of here and I don't know how to get out. I think I... Right, I'm going to go for it. I'm gonna, I think this one. Right, I'm going to say bye... Bye for now. Stay wild. Choose love. So much love to you. Bye for now.